Alright, so we're going to be talking about right now, we just did the name of the base strings. We're going to talk about scales real quick. Now, I'm not going to assume that everybody knows what a musical alphabet consists of. It's almost like the regular alphabet, but instead of going A all the way through Z, you do A through the G. So that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right. Um, then we insert the accidentals, which we'll expand upon more later on. Um, but to form the chromatic scale, this is one scale you need to know. The chromatic scale, which is the mother of all scales, because it includes every note within the musical alphabet. Yeah. Um, so it's listed literally. So I don't know if you can picture it, or if you want to write it down. So you'd have A. A sharp, B, now there's a rule, we take a pause here, B doesn't have a sharp, and so does E, E doesn't have a sharp either, so we move straight from B and we go to C, so then after C, C sharp, then D, then E, once again E does not have a sharp, so you move to F, and after F you have F sharp, then G, G sharp, and then you come back to A. Alright, um, for those of you that have been to the class, and I'll try to put, I guess, a picture of um, the formula for a major scale. Um, I just to introduce the, the topic of um, half steps and whole steps. Alright, for those of you who learn in the English system, because, you know, originally I'm from Jamaica, so I learned from the English system, so we call it semitone and tones. Now, all that is, in a, um, as you relate to the American way of learning, which is half step, whole step. A semitone is equivalent to a half step, and a tone is equivalent to a whole step. Now, this is kind of cheating. We're jumping ahead of the class that I wanted to get, but just so you can understand. Alright, so from this space right here in the fret to right here, that's a semitone or a half step. Alright, let's reset for a second. From this same space right here, skip this fret and put your finger on the other fret marker, that's going to be a whole step or a tone. Alright, so with that concept, um, we can go into what they call a formula for constructing a major scale. Now, we can start out with the root. And once again, I'll try to get this on paper to add to the video. So you have the root, then a tone away from the root, then a tone away from that last note, then a semitone, a tone again, another tone, a third tone, then a semitone. Um, in terms of the American Standard Version, basically what, I'm just, what I just said was root, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. All right, and that would be how you construct the major scale. Now. You just go around and, and um, experiment with that fact. We actually have a sheet. Um, I'll try to get a copy of the sheet up in the video. I'm still playing around with the whole video graphic thing. Um, um, I'll try to incorporate that. Uh, let's look at, for those of you in the class that have already progressed to the name of the strings you've been practicing, how it applies to the bass string, all right? So the last video we had, we named the strings if you want to recap real quick, getting drowsy after eating biscuits. So it's G, D, A, E, B. All right. So let's put the whole chromatic scale ordeal in with the um, the name of the string. So open string, let's start from the bottom one. We started with G, which is that open string there. So you hear it. Now chromatically, if you put your first finger in the first fret here, that's going to be a G sharp. We're gonna go up. We're just gonna do a few since we're recording it. Keep going a semitone up or a half step up. You get an A. And an A sharp. And a B. And a C. C sharp.
<laughs> my cameraman's <laughs> cell phone is going off. And so on and so forth. And that's how it works. Um, and if you want to try real quick on the D string, so you have D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, D sharp, so on and so forth. And of course, just a reminder, the double stops, it becomes an octave. So open string G, and the double stops here, it's an octave away. It's the very same note, but an octave away. All right, so since you already have that concept, let's move on to the C major scale, which in my opinion is, is the easiest scale. Even as a keyboard, a keyboard player will tell you because all the keys in that scale are white on a keyboard. So the notes in a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Pretty simple. All right, um, if you can, you can compare that written note of the chromatic scale with the notes I just called out. And um, we can, you know, let's just test our formula to see if it matches up. All right? I'll, I'll go over more with the patterns after we're done, but we're just going to test our formula for now. So right now I'm on the A string. I want to play C on the A string. So that's my root, or my tonic. Some of us will call it the tonic. All right, so root, and the tone. I'm going to play out of position for a second, then a tone, then a semitone, then a tone, then a tone, another tone, and finally another semitone. And what you just have is what we traditionally call Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Alright, cool. So that just tested the formula that was previously mentioned in constructing a major scale. You don't believe me? Alright, let's take it up to C sharp. So that's your root. Tone. Tone. Semitone. Tone. apply that formula, you will have made a major scale. Alright, for the purpose of the class, um, we're talking about the fingering for these scales because, yeah, we're learning in a non-traditional setting, but we try our best to stick to what is considered traditional learning. So if you were to go into a classroom to do to study music somewhere, that you wouldn't just be out in the left field, you would have some sort of foundation to build upon. Alright, so let's number our fingers. Um, you know what, I'll go to bass support in another class, but for right now let's number our fingers. So my thumb's already behind the bass for my support. Um, finger number one, your index. Number two, number three, number four, your pinky. And yes, you're expected to use all four. Alright, usually you stay within a four fret position. Make sure all fingers can be assigned to a fret. It takes practice, don't worry about it. But um, in a perfect world, to play the major scale, let's say we're starting on the C on the A string, which is what most of the people in the class start on. All right, so this is A string, open A. Let's work our way up to C, A sharp, B, then C. Alright, so for the C major scale, and I'm going to forget about the, the finger position just for a second so you can see the notes that are within the scale in the pattern. Or I'm going to try to stay within this 4 fret pattern right here. Alright, so let's go. So C on the A string. It's your first note. That's root. Tone should be D on the A string. Then your next tone, we're going to skip over a string just to honor that 4 string pattern. We're going to play E on a D string. F on a D string, then G on a D string, then A on a G string, then B on a G string, then C on a G string, which is our octave. Alright? So you can rewind and practice that as necessary. Now let's do the fingering for it. The 
correct fingering. You're going to use your second finger to play the C on the A string. And then use your fourth finger to play the D on the A string. Use your first finger to play the E on the D string. Use your second finger to play that F on the D string. Use your fourth finger to play that G. And use your first finger to play that A on the G string. And use your third finger to finally get some work done to play that B on the G string. And then use your fourth finger finally to play that C on the G string. So, I always use a metronome, by the way, to get that steady pulse going, or just to do it slow. And that's the major scale. Alright, um, that's it for now.